Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled The Time I Was the Only White Guy at an All Black Wedding and the Mother of the Bride Thought I Was a Waiter. This story is a little more lighthearted compared to the usual ones that get posted daily, but I like reading those too. My good friend got married last year and invited me to his wedding. I put on a nice suit on, black tie, shine shoes, all that jazz. I didn't realize I was the only white guy there until the ceremony ended. I went huh and thought nothing of it. At the after party, I also didn't realize the waiters were dressed exactly like me. White shirt, black tie, shine shoes. I'm walking around and a nice older lady, who would turn out to be the mother of the bride, approached me as I passed her table. She needed an extra seat for her table. Her, excuse me, can we move this chair over here? Me, uh, yeah, go ahead. Her, do you think that will inconvenience the other table? Me, I mean that sounds like that's the other table's problem. Yes, I really said this. Her, uh, all right. Are there extra chairs in the back? Me, probably. I mean, they know there is a wedding going on, so I think it'll be okay. Her, oh, okay. Well, thank you. Me internally, that was weird. Later, I had to go to that same table to drop off my portion of the wedding purse. And that nice lady was there with her sister. Me, hello again. Her, oh, hi. Great timing. Do you know when we'll be eating? Me, no, but I can't wait. Wedding food is the best isn't it? Her, somewhat annoyed well, with what we're paying for this, I'd imagine it would be. Me, and thank you very much for paying for it. Really, I'm so happy to be here. Her, me, um, so is this where we leave the wedding gifts? Her, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Haha, you don't work here. Me, I, what? Two seconds later, a waiter dressed like me walks by I understand. We all had a good laugh about it. The next story is titled, I don't work here, I own the place. Background, I'm a small Chinese woman living in a predominantly white neighborhood. Our house have a large front yard, and we like to do the gardening ourselves. I don't speak with an accent, and I usually use a very English name for easy communication. I called for a free estimate from a local duct cleaning service and scheduled it on a Saturday. My mom and I were in the front yard planting flowers and eating, chatting family stuff in our own language while enjoying the nice weather outside. We were in full gardening gear complete with straw hats and rain boots with face masks on. A white truck with a trailer drove up and a mid-aged man jumped out. Guy, waving me down, eh? Where is the owner of the house? Me, pulling down my mask. Oh, you must be the duct cleaning service. Please come in with me. Guy, annoyed, no, I need to speak with the landlord. Me, chuckles, I'm the landlord. Do you need to come in the house for the esty? guy cuts me off no i need to speak to the person who made the call me pulling out my phone okay hold on dialing the company number guy pulling out his phone see the landlord is calling me me hi i'm english name i'm standing right in front of you i don't think i will be needing your services today goodbye the guy stood there dumbstruck for a moment then sulkily walked back to his truck and left my mom looked at me confused and asked in Chinese, what was that? I shrugged and answered, looks like we need to call another duct cleaning company. The next story is titled, a wild Karen gets thrown out and banned from a hardware store and I get a free sausage. This happened in Australia a while ago. This occurred just before our first lockdown and there were mandatory mask requirements when shopping at retail stores. For context in high school and all through university, college for you Americans, I worked at a mom and pop hardware store, so I know my way around hardware. Please note that in our big box hardware stores, there isn't much customer service, most staff are there to check on stock levels, stock shelves, and attend the cash register. The old war horses, staff, are always occupied helping people, but they are in short supply. So it's a Saturday and I need some plumbing supplies. I'm in one of the most intimidating aisle for a lot of people, it's got all the copper, tap, and toilet fittings. I've got all the items I need and I've been there a good 20 minutes. I can see an older gent struggling and trying to work out what he needs. 
I catch his eye and he waves me over enthusiastically. I grab what he needs for a leaky cistern and instruct him how to install it. He thanks me and leaves. As I'm about to leave, another old gent waves at me and asks me for help. I show him a direct replacement for his tap washes, but then proceed show him a ceramic fitting that basically makes sure he never has to replace washes again. He balks at the price, but I convince him to get it once a salesman, always a salesman. Plus, he gets a senior's discount. As I'm about to leave with the gent, a wild Karen appears from behind me, silent as a mouse. But mousy she is not. She's dumpy, middle-aged, big bushy brown hair and face that caked in makeup. Screeching at me, or you, I want these items as I turn, she shoves a list in my face. Now if she had smiled at me and asked politely, I would have happily helped her. But duck that crap. I smile and politely decline. Sorry, I don't work here, indicating my clothes. I've got a blue singlet on, blue cargo shorts, pockets full of plumbing products. Staff wear red and green. So I turn and proceed to leave. Karen reaches out her claw-like hand and tries to turn me towards her, but I slip out of her grasp. You duck and helped him, indicating the old fella still standing next to me. You work here. Don't lie to me, she screams. Ma'am, I don't work here. I attempt my best withering gaze. I'll let the counter know you need help, and they will send someone along. I make a hasty retreat with the old gent. Karen's hot on my tail screaming at the top of her lungs, calling me a few racist names and claiming I'm sexist besides other choice things. I've ignored her and I think this has infuriated her more. She's tried a couple of times to get a hold of me, but I've struggled it off, once of which she loses her footing and trips. This enables me to get the hell out of Dodge. I can hear her lumbering along on my heels, screeching like a velociraptor. A member of staff, let's call her S, intercepts Karen and asks her to stop screaming. Karen points to me and starts ranting about me, calling me names and making up a story about me being rude, racist, and assaulting her. Clearly as soon as she says assault, the situation has now escalated and she's in for a very big surprise. S turns to me and rolls her eyes. She knows this is going to be a long one, I do too. I turn to the old gent and tell him to get in line because this is going to be a while. He tells me it's fine, I'll need a witness, my heart bursts a little. So security gets called. I have a quick conversation with the manager and relay the events that have unfolded. The old man relays the same thing. I also indicate that there are multiple security cameras around the place. I ask the manager if she can remind Karen that there is multiple security cameras around. Police get called anyways and unlucky for her. No time to recant. There is already a patrol car in the parking lot. They just had lunch. They isolate us, me, old fella and Karen, and do a quick interview. So I'm chilly in the office, 60-ish minutes. Officers come in and have reviewed the tapes and ask if I want to press any charges. I decline and they let me go. Manager is waiting for me and walks me to the checkout. Let's me know Karen is getting a lifetime ban. Didn't know they even did that. I pay for my plumbing supplies with a trade discount, yaw. Yeah. As I'm walking to the exit, I see old fella sitting on the bench. He gets up and asks me if I want a sausage. We have a good laugh over sausage with onions and a Coke. I offer to come over and fit the tap washes for him, and we organize a time for tomorrow morning for me to drop by. He actually only lives a street away from me. As I'm getting in my car, Karen emerges with the cops and the manager. She looks distressed, at least she's not in cuffs. I know she's not got many options. So I drive by as she's talking to someone on the phone and wind down my window, hey, see across the road the sign that says R, they are a trade plumbing supply store. If you go there and don't be an idiot, they will have everything on your list. The next story is titled, I don't work here. Here is my home that I own, that I am working on. A few years ago, I was a sweet summer child freshly out of college with zero idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was a homeowner after maternal unit moved overseas and gave the house to me, and I decided to work for a house painting company for one summer while I got my metaphorical ducks in a row. The next summer, I was out of the painting business and working as an EMT, which meant sometimes I would have a full day or two off, 24 on slash 48 off. I noticed my house was in some need of paint touch-ups, so I decided to do them myself. I had brushes, paint, nothing to do and some beer, so I went at it one Tuesday afternoon. So I'm working on the frame of the front door, dressed in old painter whites and a t-shirt with the sleeves cut off, and I sit down to let the primer dry and have a beer. I'm happily perched on the front step when I notice a can I speak to your manager haircut with a face that looks like she just ate 12 lemons staring at me from the sidewalk. 
My front lawn is decently long and slopes down a hill, but I could see an artery pulsing in her neck from my spot. She had a dog next to her, so I just wave and say cute dog. I guess my words broke the floodgates and she unleashed upon me a verbal assault of which I understood about 30%. The gist, how dare you drink on the job on this nice property? You don't deserve to sit there and waste the hard-earned money of the well-educated person that owns this place. While I'm pondering this, she's still spewing frothing condescension at me, which culminated in uneducated, lazy, menial, freeloading, immigrant drunks like you are what is wrong with this country. Well, I'm white. Like, really white. Blonde hair, green eyes. Born and raised in the good old US of us specifically, in this house. Perhaps I look like some sort of insidious immigrant from far away, so I stand up and make my way down to her, but not before cracking open another beer. She's positively quivering with anger and indignation. Her dog is pulling at the leash to say hi to me, and so I bend down to say hello back, when she says, well, what do you have to say for yourself? I raise myself to my full 6'2 height, which towers over her little 5 nothing self. She doesn't back down, and the following conversation ensues. Me? Hello ma'am. What seems to be the problem? Her? Scoffs you. Sitting there wasting the homeowner's money so you can get paid to be a lazy drunk. Me? Oh, I'm being paid? Seems odd, I didn't feel the need to pay myself for this, but I suppose that could be fun to try. Her? Gears turning. Pay yourself? Don't make me laugh. Some deadbeat like you couldn't afford this house. You need an education for a real job. I'm wondering what her education fixation is all about, but not caring all that much. I just want to entertain her conversation enough to really get her mad. Maybe her head will explode. Me? Well, I didn't buy this house, my mother did, but she left it to me when she moved overseas after I graduated from college. Her? Smirking. Oh, did you go to local community college, known for not being that great? Only someone working as a painter would go there. Me? Actually, if you look at my shirt, you'll see it says Ivy League School Athletics, which is where I attended school and played a sport. I am in good shape because of that, so I figured I would keep that up by working on improving my own home while having a few beers to cool off in this heat. Did you attend community college? Because if so, I can see how you might not be able to understand that. Disclaimer, nothing wrong with that CC. It's where I got my EMT license. Just wanted to watch her boil, and oh boy did she. Her eyes widen bigger than I thought possible, and her mouth starts working like elderly folksies do when they've lost a lot of teeth, lots of lip twisting. This culminates in her reading her ugly head back and spitting on the front of my shirt. You probably stole it from someone, you ungrateful piece of crap. Okay, wow, not sure why I'm ungrateful for and you germs. So I tell her that's it's been fun but I'm going to continue working and turn to walk back up the lawn. She grabs the back of my shirt and attempts to pull me backwards, doesn't work, so I spin around and smack her hand off me. She flops like a Premier League soccer player, flinging herself all over my lawn howling like she's been shot. She's let go of the dog's leash, so he comes over to me for pets, happy as a clam. Her yodeling has brought some neighbors out of their homes, including my cool next door ones. They come over and I give them the story, and ask for their phone to call the cops. Mine was inside charging, they laugh and hand it over. I let the cops know that some kudkano is gyrating loudly on my lawn, could they please come remove her? I return to my work, my cool neighbors probably have started making popcorn. A little while later, I hear the cops arrive. Crazy is still singing her ducked up opera and starts screaming at the cops a story of a belligerently drunk squatter who's painting said side of squatting, who chased her with a baseball bat and broke her arm in multiple places. Her talons point to me, so I come down and tell the cops the whole story. They crack up, apparently they know the nutcase by name, and so they tell her to call her husband to get the dog again and cuff her for trespassing and disorderly conduct. Dog hung out with me until the husband, apologizing profusely, came and got him. He also informed me that they are in divorce proceedings, so that may have made her crazier than usual. Never saw the lady again, thank God, but I've developed a neighborly friendship with her ex and the pup. All well that ends well. The next story is titled, I Don't Work Here Lady Vacation Edition. So I'm on vacation with my family, the hotel we are staying, it has a nice free breakfast. It has one of those waffle machines as well. We walk down to eat breakfast. I'm wearing Batman lounge pants and a t-shirt. I make everyone a waffle because dads are the best, really because I don't want the kids to start pushing each other around hot metal. After I hand the waffles I finally make mine and start to sit down. 
when I hear I'd like two waffles. Obviously, I ignore it and sit down with my family. The lady follows me and says, crazy lady, didn't you hear me? I said I wanted two waffles. Me? Yay, I heard you. The breakfast self-serve. You have to make them yourself. Crazy lady, I just saw you hand out waffles to these people. Get off your butt and do your job. Me? These people are my family. I don't work here. I'm on vacation just like you. Crazy lady. Listen, here you lazy. Crazy lady's kid. Look mommy, he's wearing Batman pants. She looks down sees my pants. It finally clicks and she starts making her breakfast. Her husband walks up afterwards and tells me he's sorry and offers to buy me us lunch on him. He hands me a 20 and says sorry again. The next story is titled Dumbest Person Ever. I used to work as a paramedic in a large city. A Home Depot opened right at the street corner we are supposed to sit at. Me and my partner were both new homeowners as was a police unit in the area so we all go in together. They were having some nice sales on tools that we all could use. Some guy comes up to me asking for help getting something behind the lock case. I just look at him and say sorry I don't work here. He then goes to my partner and asks the same thing. Now as most people know the Home Depot uniforms are orange. Myself and my partner are dressed in navy blue pants and tops with the word paramedic in foreign letters on the back. No way we can be confused for Home Depot employees, but it gets better. He then goes up to the police officers, again big letters on their back saying police. The cops just look at him and go, are you drunk or stupid? After a bit of a conversation of more of this, they take his ID and run his name. He was on probation, had an active warrant out for his arrest, and was trying to buy a box cutter in violation of his probation. Yep, he spent the night in lockup. The next story is titled, Please Understand Before One of Us Dies. I work at a college, not as a teacher or teacher's assistant, but as Dynamics 365 specialist. So I'm in the IT department, but I'm not the guy who comes to your desk to fix your computer. I am an expert in a specific system. This all means that while I do work here, I do not work here. Where here is the desktop services team. This is relevant because one day I'm at work in the IT office and I hear a knock on the door. For reference, the actual area we work in on the second floor of a building. The other floors are used for storage and there is a single staircase that connects them. At the bottom of that staircase is an access control door. If you don't have the code, you're not getting in. So I get up, lock my PC, head downstairs and open the door. I am faced with some random teacher holding a laptop who shoves it at me and says, this is broken, fix it or give me a new one and do it now. My response is the classic sorry. I'm not part of the desktop services team. If you would like to leave me the ticket number for the ticket you've raised then, I'll get one of the technicians to contact you when they get back. Teacher engages Karen mode. Give me a new computer. You IT people, you're all so lazy, all you do is play computer games all day. We know you always lie to us, she goes on, I stop listening. I respond with a repetition of the previous statement and when she doesn't listen I just close the door on her. This is where it gets really fun, her response is to throw the laptop at the door. Laptop 0, door 1, and then shout that she is friends with the head of IT and will get me fired as she storms off. So I pull out my phone and call my boss. Coincidentally, my direct boss is the head of IT services and she is amazing to work for. Explain what just happened and ask her what I should do. She, my boss, asks me if the asset tag on the laptop is still in the wreckage by the door. Happily it is. This lets us find out who is the person responsible for the laptop. Long story short, my boss talks to her boss and she gets fired for gross misconduct and destruction of company property. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.